If you follow genomic science, you're probably familiar with the concept of genotype, the genetic map of an organism, while this story is about haplotypes, the genetic map of an individual chromosome. Cells in the human body store DNA in 23 pairs of chromosomes inherited from the parents, and knowing how genes and gene variants are distributed between these chromosome pairs, what's termed their chromosomal or haplotype phase, can give us important information on how a person's genes will be expressed, including whether or not some inherited mutations may develop into an illness. But despite major advances in genomic technologies, so far getting this important chromosomal phasing information has proven very difficult. So to address this, researchers from Biorad and Harvard Medical School recently published a study in PLOS One on a new way to determine whether gene variants reside on the same or different chromosomes. In demonstrating their method, the collaborators used mutations associated with cystic fibrosis. One of the researchers, Jack Regan, of the Biorad Digital Biology Center, told us why this offered a good model. One of the sort of hidden ideas in disease is, is that there are stretches of variants along a single stretch of DNA that actually work together to create a pathogenic phenotype. So we chose cystic fibrosis because the gene itself is actually very long and has many different mutations that have been identified to influence the course of disease. Some of these actually work together to create a more pathogenic mutation than would be otherwise uh, the case if they were found in opposite strands of the chromosome. In making this distinction in chromosomal phase, the team used a technology called droplet digital PCR. And this method disperses a sample among tens of thousands of tiny droplets, in effect creating thousands of nanoscale test tubes for polymerase chain reaction to occur. So uh, drop phase is a technique that we developed in collaboration with uh, Harvard Medical School and Steve McCarroll. It relies on the, the very simple principle of if you partition a sample, if you have a stretch of DNA which contains two, two markers, if those two markers are tethered together by a stretch of DNA, when they find their way into a droplet, that droplet will, will be positive for both markers. What drop phase does is it actually measures the number of droplets that are double positive for both targets of interest, above and beyond what we would expect from random distribution of these targets amongst the droplets. By measuring that, we can actually confirm that the two markers are in fact linked on the same stretch of DNA, which effectively is phasing the genome. Because getting this chromosomal phase information has been so difficult up to now, the authors see great potential for its use in better understanding the genome and genetically based disease. And now that we have a technology which allows for easy phasing, we really expect researchers to take this technology, run with it, very quickly and easily determine the phase or the haplotype of their samples. This will give us great in insight into um, how the genome really affects the course of disease. To learn more about this research, watch Jack Regan's full presentation on the group's methods and results here.